Here's where it gets trickier again, so bear with me. We've not only got big cups and small cups, but we can have full cups and empty cups. What changes is how full or empty our cup is on any given moment based on what's happening around us. What does not change is our needs profile. So our needs profile, if we've got a big cup of something, that we call that our dominant cup, and that actually doesn't change for our entire life. We're born with that. It is genetically given to us, just like a lot of our other features and our personality and our behaviours are. So while our great big cup, our dominant cup, doesn't change, our needs profile doesn't change, whether or not that cup is full or empty will change based on what's happening for us in that moment at that time. We can choose behaviours to fill it. When that cup is emptying, it feels that we get a sense of disharmony. When it is full, we have a nice strong sense of well-being. Each cup creates different outcomes for us. So a full safety and survival cup creates security. A full mastery cup creates self-esteem. A full fun cup creates joy for us. A full connection and love cup creates a sense of self-worth. And a full freedom cup creates a strong sense of autonomy. So now you know what the Phoenix Cups framework is about, it's time to have a reflect and think about what could be your dominant cup? What is your biggest cup? The one that drives your behavioural choices the most. It might help to ask a friend or colleague or family member what they think and listen to their interpretation of your behaviours. They might not always get it right, but it's worth reflecting with them and listening to their perspective of how they view your behaviours. Once we know our own needs profile, it really helps us to communicate to our family members about what we need and how we actually have really different needs profiles, which is why sometimes we don't understand each other's behaviours.